everyone, Hungry Reader here, and I hope you're ready. I hope you remembered to wear bells on your clothes and hang your food in trees, and I hope you are prepared to play dead and protect your vital organs, because here comes every bear that ever there was! <laughs> That's right, we're going to do all the Berenstain Bears books in roughly chronological order, roughly because I don't own all the Berenstain Bears books, but I'm going to do them in as chronological order as I can and fill in the gaps. The very first Berenstain Bears book was, of course, The Big Honey Hunt. I do not own that one. I do have the second one ever made, which is called The Bike Lesson. This one is remarkable for two different reasons. One, it's the first place where they're actually called the Berenstain Bears on the cover. Also, the first book was credited to Stanley and Janice Berenstain. This is the first one where they were called Stan and Jan. Both of those changes were suggestions from Dr. Seuss himself. In 1964, the Berenstain Bears consisted of Papa Bear, Mama Bear, and Small Bear. They look pretty different, don't they? They're all a lot thinner, and the two male bears have much more closely cropped head fur. They were not yet the bears as we know them. For that, we flash forward 10 years to 1974 with the Berenstain Bears' new baby. This was the very first of the first time books, which were published in the Random House Pictureback imprint and introduced a new tradition to the Berenstain Bears, the little four-line quatrain that begins every book. This way to bear country. You'll know when you're there. As soon as you enter, you'll feel like a bear. Odd thing to start the new baby with. Maybe those are directions for the stork. Down a sunny dirt road. That was the title of their autobiography. Over a log bridge, up a grassy hill, deep in bear country, lived a family of bears. Papa Bear, Mama Bear, and Small Bear. That name's gonna be awkward if he grows up to be a six-footer like Papa. It was fun growing up in bear country. Helping Papa get honey from the old bee tree. Helping Mama bring in the vegetables from the garden. Boy, look at him chow down on that radish. What is he, a fraggle? Small Bear felt good growing up in a tree in his own room in the snug little bed that Papa Bear had made for him when he was a baby. But one morning it did not feel so good. Small Bear woke up with pains in his knees and aches in his legs. Small Bear, you've outgrown your little bed, said Papa Bear. Today we shall go out into the woods and make you a bigger one. With that, he ate his breakfast of piping hot porridge, washed it down with a gulp of honey from the family honey pot. Ah, oh, don't eat drink from the carton! But Papa, what will happen to my little bed? Don't worry about that, Small Bear, said Mama Bear as she closed the door after him. She smiled and patted her front. Front? <laughs> That's an unusual euphemism. What will happen to my little bed? Small Bear asked again. Papa had chopped down a tree and was splitting it into boards. We'll have a new baby soon. We'll need that little bed. A new baby? asked Small Bear. He hadn't noticed that Mama Bear had grown very round lately, although he had noticed it was harder and harder to sit on her lap. That's apparently a true story. Uh, this is how Stan and Jan's first son reacted to the coming of their second. And it's coming soon? Yes, very soon. To a theater near you. A good amount of this story is simply told in the pictures, which is great. Look at all the detail they go to in showing how a bed is carved and shaped and filed into place. I mean, I read this book as a kid and I was like, maybe it'd be cool to be a carpenter. When they got there, a small bear noticed right away that his old bed wasn't there anymore. My little bed! It's already gone! You outgrew it just in time. Come and see. It was true. There was his snug bed with a new little baby in it. Wow! Papa Bear just ditched his laboring wife to build a bed for a few hours? Was there even a doctor present? Did she do that alone? Mama Bear's a badass! And how does the smaller bear greet her big brother, Small Bear? With a punch in the nose! <coughs> and so one of the great rivalries of literature is born. The next morning, he woke up feeling fine, with no pains in his knees or aches in his legs. His nose was a little tender, though. Actually, this book doesn't really tell you much about the experience of there being a new baby in the house, apart from one day you come home and Mama's had a baby. It could happen at any time. They won't even warn you. 
actually, what I really wondered about this book was how come they never so showed the part where they all went to court and had Small Bear's name changed to Brother Bear? <laughs> 